Find the pencil mark with the cut through your zero clearance sub fence and cross cut the excess material from the trim sections. From this point forward, we'll be using standard half-blind technique to join the four rectangles of wood. The pieces just made will be cut as the tailboards. Slide your LS to the scoring pass position at zero and clamp the carriage in place. The full rabbet width for the IDDD pattern is 7 seconds of an inch. After making the scoring pass, make three subsequent passes of 1 16th inch to complete the rabbets. You'll find the rabbit width for your selected pattern listed under the diagram of the selection shown at the back of the master reference guide. After completing the rabbits, return the fence to the scoring pass position at zero. Clamp the right angle fixture to your fence and table, and place the two tailboards with the rabbits facing away from each other against the faceplate. Don't forget, pencil edges against the fence. Clamp the pieces securely with a wooden handscrew clamp. Turn the router on and make the scoring pass. Then advance to the first C cut in front of the zero through a series of light side by side cuts. After reaching the first C cut, 5C in this example, move your fence from one C cut to the next across the full width of your material. After completing the cuts, immobilize the right angle fixture and flip the stock. Again, pencil edges against the fence. Always press the pieces down and against the fence before securing to the right angle fixture. Return the LS to a scoring pass and repeat the tail series of cuts on your two boards. Keeping the pencil marked edges against the fence ensures that the A and C series of cuts remain synchronized even if you are slightly off center. For the pin cuts, move the LS to the first D cut that exposes the cutter outside the fence, 9D in this example. Bring the shop stop up to the outside diameter of the cutter and clamp in place. Again, this setup will always produce a socket that is a little short, so we'll only cut one end of one piece at this time, then adjust as necessary. 
Move the stock into the cut until you just touch the stop. Don't force the material against the stop surface. Now move from D cut to D cut until you've cut across the full width of your material. Assemble the pin board to one of the tail boards to determine how much you need to adjust the cut length. The amount that the tails protrude is equal to the amount the stop must be moved away from the cutter. Slide the scale to an easy reference number and move the stop away to adjust the cut length. Return the fence to the first D cut made and repeat this series of cuts on both ends of both boards. Assemble the pin boards to one of the tails, then add the remaining tails. The Incra double dovetail, truly a striking joint. For this demonstration, we've centered for two and a half inch wide material using the box G template with 8B as our center cut. Begin by moving the fence to a scoring pass position and lock the carriage in place. Slide the Lexan measuring scale to read zero under the cursor. Secure the right angle fixture to your table with a spring clamp and clamp two pieces of stock with a backing board to the faceplate. You can use your centering board as a backing piece. Securely tighten the hand screw clamp, then remove the spring clamp. Beginning with the scoring pass, advance to the first template mark in front of the zero in one or two passes. Once you've reached the first mark, 6A in this example, and made the cut, Simply move the LS positioner from one A cut to the next until you've cut across the full width of your stock. Keep in mind that your first cut will be based on the width of stock you've centered on. Unless you're using two and a half inch wide material as shown in this demo and 8B is your center cut, your first cut probably won't be the same as ours. After completing the cuts on one end of the two boards, Clamp the right angle fixture to your fence and table and flip the two boards over. As always, allow the cutter to come to a complete stop before unclamping the boards from the faceplate. Now we'll repeat the A series of cuts beginning with a scoring pass.
Next, we'll make the B series of cuts on the remaining two pieces of stock. Clamp the right angle fixture to your fence and table and flip the backing board over to present a fresh backing surface. Add the two pieces of stock and securely tighten the wooden hand screw clamp. Remove the spring clamp. Move the LS to the first B cut that positions the cutter outside the fence and make the cut. Now advance from one B cut to the next until you've cut across the full width of your material. As always, when using the right angle fixture, apply side pressure with your right hand to keep the right angle fixture against the face of the fence throughout the cut. Apply downward pressure with your left hand to keep the ends of your board firmly in contact with the table. After completing this series of cuts, flip your stock over on the right angle fixture one last time and repeat the B cut locations. Now assemble for a simple but effective joint that adds strength and beauty to your next project. Still looking for the signature joint that gives your project that custom look? The Variations Technique offers the perfect mechanism for custom design patterns using any equally spaced template. While every cut mark on a selected template that falls within your stock width must be made in order to produce a box joint or dovetail, you can change the order to create many interesting variations. The Variations Technique is really quite simple. By leaving cuts out when producing one side of a joint and then using the drop cuts on the other side, you can modify the look of an existing template. Let's take a look at a few examples. On this pin board, we skipped cuts 8B and 12B during the cutting process. This leaves wider pins between the sockets. To modify the tails to match, we simply make all of the required A cuts, plus we add in the two B cuts dropped when cutting the pins. On this tailboard, we skipped cuts 7A and 12A during the cutting process. This leaves wider tails. To modify the pins to match, simply make all of the usual B cuts required for the selected template, then remove the excess between the appropriate sockets. When cutting the pins, it's best to take out the excess material with several light side-by-side -side passes, rather than trying to remove the material in a single pass. You can even skip cuts on both sides of the joint to produce combinations of wide and narrow pins and tails. Just remember, whenever using the variations technique, you must always modify the joint pattern symmetrically. Give it a try sometime. Now that you've seen and learned about some of the many things that you can do with the LS positioner at your router table, it's time for you to start writing the next chapter in the Inkrajig story. All of the great projects you've been dreaming of are just a few well-placed cuts away, and now you've got just the right tool to make it happen. So put on that old shop apron, pick out a few nice boards, and let Inkra help make your next project a success.